Welcome to Bellrite, a captivating blend of RPG, strategy, medieval open world adventure. In this immersive journey, you embark on a quest to reclaim your lost homeland, forge alliances and shape the destiny of an entire kingdom. But is it any good? Well, hopefully I can help you decide if this is the game for you. I got to play this game in a playtest for over two days and I clocked over 30 hours and I'll share with you my thoughts about the game. So firstly, what is the game about? Well, in Bellrite, players have the power to shape their own destiny, establish uh, their own settlements, and liberate the land from tyranny. And you get to aid villagers in their struggle against oppression, but it's not just about conquest. Bellrite offers a deep strategy gameplay where every decision matters. Um, you get to command your forces, uh, devise cunning tactics, and prove your valor on the battlefield as well. You get to recruit from all walks of life, each with their own skills and abilities. Uh, together, you will forge a fellowship capable of facing any challenge that stands in your way. You get to explore a vast and vibrant world filled with mysteries waiting to be unraveled uh, from ancient ruins to dark forest. Uh, Bellrite is ripe for discovery. So I guess that's my take on what Bellrite is all about. And um, let's get into actual gameplay and have a look at this game and see how good it actually is. Alright, let's talk about the start of the game, which is the character creation. After all, it is an RPG game. Now, do remember, uh, this is a playtest, so we this thing could change, but this is probably the most disappointing thing I found. We had like six uh, women's faces, which are all very similar to choose from, and we had about 16 men's faces, and again, all very similar. But look, you know, that hopefully will change going forward and um, that was probably the most disappointing thing that I found straight up but let's get into the game itself all right so the first thing you're going to be doing is um, when you start the game is you're going to be following this path that pretty much leads you to this first village which is going to be the first time that you get to interact with anybody in the actual game itself so when we enter this village we're going to be looking around and um, interacting with people and trying to work out what we are supposed to be doing next Essentially, you'll be finding an elder and then he'll be telling you a little bit about what's happening around the place. And this is essentially your starting point in the game and where you are going to start working on building relationships with the villagers, uh, building renown in the game, which is a, a basically gives you the ability to recruit people. And the more renown you have and the better your relationship with this village, the better people that you're going to actually be able to recruit to your own village itself. As you can see, the graphics are quite good. Uh, it's a medieval village. It's um, pretty much how you would probably expect a medieval village to look. And so, yeah, look, the only thing I found straight up and um, was there is a little bit of AI voicing in this. The developers have said they're going to remove that um, as time goes by. So, as I said, it is uh, essentially going to be released as a beta game and um, things are going to be changing so th that was probably the only put off at first was the AI voicing but it did eventually I did get used to it and it wasn't such a big deal but you would be interacting with an elder in each of the villages that you come across and these guys will give you missions and little tasks to do and that would the sort of things that would help you I guess establish yourself in the village as someone that they can trust so it is all about building trust in these villages and establishing you know some sort of rapport with people before you can start recruiting which i found was pretty cool now essentially the first thing this guy's going to get you to do is set up your own uh, little settlement and um, well it's a so a place for you to establish yourself in the area and then you can start to uh, recruit and build and do all the fun things like research and um, you know establish yourself in the area itself so let's get into the next part which I found really fun which was the actual settlement building and we'll take a look at that now. Alright so I did take a good look around the map before I settled on an area. As with any game, selecting an area for your settlement is going to be super important so I will be doing some uh, I guess tutorials on this game as soon as it's released to help you guys pick out good areas but um, researching the area and working out where you're going to build a settlement could be very very important you're going to need a lot of resources in this game as you can see i am just building um, my new home here and it basically involved me collecting some uh, logs and um, sticks and flax and things like that so you need to have those things in available area to you 
and I guess that is something that is important in the game um, going forward so just bear that in mind but I did find a nice spot here actually really close to the village that had a lot of the resources that I believe that I needed so I did just start here and um, it was nice and flat and open and that's why I like I like to be organized so I wasn't using up valuable resources for one uh, there was lots of things on the ground as you can see a lot of flowers and stuff around I tried to build in an area that I wasn't using those areas and taking up those resources that I might need later on but plenty of wood around the area as well that stuff regrows which is great to see and the seasons and um, the actual time of days and stuff did move pretty quickly so I do believe that that will be something that you'll be able to change in the settings before setting up a game I would have liked to have had a, uh, a longer day um, and, and you know maybe short, the, the nights weren't that important, I was sleeping through them anyway. But um, the seasons did roll around pretty quickly as well. So you are in uh, different seasons and I guess this is in a, a medieval kind of a Europe setting or England setting where a temperature is quite uh, moderate and cool. Uh, not like um, say here in Australia where we get long summers where I am and not a lot of cool at all. So it does get pretty snowy and things do change. Now, that is another thing, I guess, um, with the settlement building that you have to bear in mind. As the seasons do change, uh, certain resources and things are gonna be unavailable to you, especially things like food and uh, certain things like flax and stuff that may only grow in certain times of the year. So I did find that very exciting, that I had to do a lot of planning and I had to think about the things that I needed to pick up and, and store and collect when the season was really good. But um, yeah, as you can see, the actual building process is, is involved in, you know, at first you collecting a lot of items yourself, but as you build your settlement, you'll be able to recruit uh, people to do a lot of these tasks for you. And then you can set up automation and like, uh, as you lay out your village, those things like you can see ahead of me, I have a, um, a small area that I've already set up something, I can't remember what that was, but I might have think, I think might have a hut for me to recruit people. So I have somewhere for them to sleep. Uh, once you set that building in place, if you just leave it and you can assign other people to build those things for you. So the actual uh, settlement building itself was quite good. Um, you had to build your way through certain things to begin with in order to open up access to other items, which would be pretty normal. And um, then there also is research involved and you need to be able to research you know, certain things if you want to say get a uh, a fire a drying fire pit or something you wouldn't say you wanted to make your food last longer all right so I've jumped ahead a little bit here just to give you an idea of what the actual settlement would look a little bit further on you can see that I'm quite close to one of the towns there and this is what I've managed to build and mind you this is probably about the first four three or four or five hours of gameplay pretty straightforward at the moment, I've just got some storage. I've got a uh, storage area. I've got some, you can see over there, there's a storage area. I've got some fire pits going. Um, so I'm trying to get food. I've got a, like a research area. Um, got my own private little inventory area here, which is quite good. You can store books and, and things that you don't want to be raided, I believe. So you will get raided in this game. Uh, early on, I got raided a couple of times and lost a few things. Uh, so bear that in mind um, there is it is a learning curve and I really did enjoy this part of it um, so that, that's pretty much the settlement and at the beginning um, here I'm going off now to find more resources uh, before winter comes but um, just wanted you to see a little bit more of the village all right we're going to go on to the next part which is recruitment and um, it's pretty important in this game so we'll have a look at that now all right guys let's talk about recruiting companions this is a super important part of the game um, i'm going to show you just a one this is the, probably the first guy that you're going to come across you get directed to this guy from the village elder to begin uh, so it is part of the storyline i guess it kind of gets you going you don't really need to recruit this guy i don't think but it does go through some dialogue here you can see um, me talking to him and this guy's gonna you know uh, show me how to do some stuff apparently and so yeah he's the first companion that you might take on in the game skills wise you'll um, see in a minute there is an option when you do recruit these people to not recruit them so you can have this conversation with a, a potential companion and then decide not to recruit this person based on their skill set and I'll show you that a little later as well in a few minutes I'll, we'll jump to the village and have a look at a couple of other people that I try to recruit 
and have a look at you know why I can't can't recruit them and why I can recruit them as well. But um, as you can see, um, Lum, um, I can't even pronounce this guy's name. Lum, no, I'm, I'm an Aussie, so this is really tough. <laughs> so maybe you guys can help me there. But um, pronunciation is not my strong point. Anyway, this will be the first guy that you come across. Um, let's have a look in a second and see whether we can actually jump to the bit where he shows us his, I guess, skill set. Okay, it turns out that um, I didn't actually record the skill set bit for him or it didn't show us uh, that in the game. I can't remember now, but you can see just here, I'm talking to Iris and you can see along the right hand side, she's got a lot of things in there like harvesting, farming, hunting, and, and they're all ranked out of five. Um, on the left side some of them and some are sixes and some are fours so I guess these numbers do go up and down but the five is as high as you're gonna get for farming on her I guess and four would be as far as you can get for another person here's another uh, lady that I had a chat with and we tried to recruit her as well now this particular person if I recall we couldn't um, no yes we can it's all green so we have enough renowned but her skill sets were quite low compared to the person we just spoke to and uh, you can see fours and threes are the, the, the most that you're going to be able to get with her. So I ran around this village and kind of had chats with different people just to see whether I could recruit them. Um, this one I got green as well. We had some twos, threes and fours. Um, we got another person here. Um, I think I ended up maybe recruiting this guy. Um, yeah, look, he's got some other, you know, fours as high as you can go. On some of them but um, you will only get low level uh, companions straight up in the game because essentially I guess you need more renowned anyway uh, this guy's got um, some fours and some but he's got a five for cooking so yeah so like uh, maybe yeah we'll go a little bit further here's another a person this one was a novice weaver so I guess strength's going to be crafting there you go a uh, six out of eight but i can't uh recruit this person see it's red down the bottom i don't have enough re renowned and i basically don't know this person well enough now i've come across another um, andrea and this lady if i recall has a fairly good um, skill set but i don't think i can hire her either i don't have enough renowned and um, she doesn't trust me enough at this stage but something, uh, someone definitely to come back at and have a chat to. In fact, she wouldn't even let me um, recruit her at all by the look. So, um, look, the beauty of this recruitment thing is, and I really love it, is that you just can't go and recruit anybody you want. You um, have to build trust with these people and and then build, uh, gather renown with the, you know, either the, the local village or other villages before you can actually recruit these people into your uh, settlement. So it is a unique feature, I think. And one of the features that I'm looking forward to because there will be definitely strengths and um, weaknesses to each companion that you took take on. So you will want to definitely think about the companions that you do recruit. Now in saying that if you recruit a companion early on and it turns out you don't want them later on, you can let them go and you do get some of that or all of that renown back. It depends on what's going to happen with the, the launch I guess. They might change the scale of that but at a time I think it was all the renown back and then you could use that to um, potentially recruit someone else so yeah, a really unique feature and something that I am really looking forward to in the game all right well let's have a look at um, the next thing which would probably be combat and just have a quick look at combat it's um, I'm only as I said 30 hours in so the combat in this particular uh, section of the game isn't amazing but let's take a look at it now okay so this is the combat scene that I had in one of my playthroughs this was towards the end of um, my couple of days of having it so I, I managed to put together a squad of five I think I had about five companions or settlers at this particular point in time and um, yeah I organized them in squads so you can see uh, the top top of the screen there is a military tab I'll show you that in a second and you can add and remove weapons as you can see the two on the left have only got uh, clubs I think or something like that and then on the right they've got swords and um, we've got also a guy in the middle with a bow and arrow now the prerequisites of what they can actually carry are determined on their skills if they're not proficient in a particular skill I can't carry that weapon so that's uh, something to remember when playing the game which I found really good you couldn't just give a sword to everybody or a bow to everybody you had to actually make sure that they were able to actually use it 
and that would be better for you anyway if they're proficient in that and you gave them a bow that are going to be more useful as um, someone in your army rather than giving someone who's really good at bows um, a sword per se so anyway we're kind of organizing a squad here um, you can see i just designated this guy into a separate squad and if you had a lot of archers you'd put them all in one squad i guess make a, a line of archers then you would have a, a combat line or you know whatever the case may be as the game progresses um, yeah so this game is like i said going to be early access so a lot of this stuff is new and this what i'm playing is a play test so they are still developing a lot of these systems so that the combat is going to be improved definitely I found as the game went on, I got better at it. Here we go, we just jump forwards. Here we got, you can see the getting attacked. I got distracted a little bit there and they came in a bit quicker than I thought. Now I do see a couple of them standing around doing nothing, which is a bit of annoyance. Um, we've got two or three running towards me. Uh, it doesn't seem like uh, there was one to the left that was doing nothing, but uh, with the shield, she's just kind of standing there. But we won the fight pretty convincingly anyway. And we were able to loot them for things. Um, I'm, you're getting minimal stuff from these guys early on at least. There's a couple of books which are really handy. They're the things you need in order to upskill yourself and your um, settlers um, or you know, followers, whatever you want to call them. And so that's an important factor in the fighting as well. You need to take on these battles and attack people in order to get the riches and the spoils of war, I guess you could say. Now once I've um, finished with them, as I can heal them, you can see I'm putting a bandage on her. She's, um, although sleeping would probably fix that anyway, but I'm um, just testing out bandages and repair, you know, healing the troops, things like that. Um, yeah, so combat was um, interesting and uh, definitely, uh, oh, this is early, early game. But I can see it getting a lot better. Now that I've finished with them, I can just put them back to doing normal tasks around the place and they will um, no longer be in a, a military kind of stance. I've just kind of recruited them into the military. I'm guessing later on you can have uh, designated troops for just designated to protecting and, and being in an army and then designate other people to farming and crafting and hunting and things like that. So that will come. Uh, this game has a lot of uh, a, a lot of longevity I believe. I think this game is going to go far for sure. I'm um, really looking forward to the main game coming out and um, yeah so let's get back to my conclusion and whether I think this game is of any good um, with its pros and cons at the moment I think the, uh, the the pros are definitely this is open world it's really early access and it's got a lot of potential I think they put a lot of thought into recruitment of people for your settlement and how you train them and um, yeah, just the overall aspect of the storyline sounds exciting. It's a pretty big map. Um, it is very sparse. I managed to run around a little bit. It took me forever to get over uh, from one side to the other. Um, so it has lots of potential there. The the downsides, the really only downside for me was a character creation bit. I think that could be definitely improved. I would like to have seen um, more choices in you know what you know you're putting your effort into your character and making him what look like the way you want him to look. Also, being a medieval game, I would like to have seen you know banners and um, you know things like colors for your for you, you know, your I guess settlement or you know eventually it's going to be more than a settlement. You're going to be a lord, so to speak, and you know so I think having that sort of stuff may give a little bit more to the game. So yeah. Overall, I think this is definitely a game if you like this sort of thing to get your teeth into. I know there are some other games coming out very similar to this in regards to the, the war factor, but I think the hands-on building, the open worldness of this game and you know just the third person view as you can see just running around and getting involved. It's very immersive and one thing I really enjoyed about the game. So big thumbs up for me. I will definitely be playing this game. So hit that like button, consider subscribing, I'll be doing lots of tutorials on this game and if you want to follow along and see exactly how the game progresses, um, definitely uh, hit that subscribe button. Alright guys, well this is Wombat Out, this is a quick cover of the game and uh, thanks for joining me on this one.